To the high-profile Liga saga that is making national headlines, 22 civil lawsuits filed against Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson, all filed by women who accuse Watson of lewd, inappropriate conduct during personal massages. Today's video is a reaction to an interview that Tasha Kay had with one of Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson's accusers. Now, my reaction is based on a question that I've been thinking about lately. Is the sexual harassment allegation against Deshaun Watson true, or is this a case of the Me Too movement gone wrong? Let's talk about it. The Me Too movement began as a good thing for two reasons. It gives women who were sexually assaulted a supportive environment in which to reveal what happened to them. And two, it gives men the opportunity to learn how damaging some of the things that we have been doing to women. However, I'm starting to ask myself, has the Me Too movement gone too far? When I was a senior in high school, I sexually harassed a young lady while I was working as the night manager of a fast food restaurant. Now, I thought that she was flirting with me, but she was just being nice because I was her boss. Now, I didn't know how much trying to kiss her hurt her until I was confronted by her older sister. So, I was thinking to myself, that incident happened nearly 50 years ago, but what if I achieve some sort of notoriety and this woman comes out and says that I harassed her sexually and she tries to sue me? While I was a concert promoter, I took a lot of photos with women that I didn't know who wanted the picture to make it seem like that we were kind of close. Now, what if they used that picture to say that putting my hand around their waist or on their back made them feel uncomfortable? If I was famous, that might turn into a scandal, right? So I started asking myself, should a man be responsible for making a woman that he doesn't know feel comfortable or should she tell him that he made her feel uncomfortable so he won't do that with another woman? Why should women be allowed to remain silent, but then years later be able to demand that the man be canceled culturally or sued civilly? Mm. Me Too uh, has taken wings and well it should that women should have the right to go to work. They should have the right to go about their business and not be harassed. They should have the right to interact with men and expect to be treated decently and not like a piece of meat. Um, but we also live in a world, 44% of, of, of millennial women believe that somebody sending you a drink or offering you a drink is some form of sexual harassment. They also believe that a, a man give you a compliment is sexual harassment. So you better, how, how do people date? How do they interact now? No means no, but you have to say it. You got to say it. Like this woman that was with Aziz Ansar, she said she gave nine verbal cues. I've been with the same woman for 35 years, and I'd be damned, I don't know her verbal cues. I don't know what the, uh, say something. Tell me something. But let's not keep making everything the same thing. We live in a nation right now, we have gradations of murders. Murder one, murder two, manslaughter, crime of passion. We have, but, but everybody is the same in terms of comes to sexual assault. So Harvey Weinstein is the same as Aziz Ansar, the, the, the same thing. We are living in a world where now we have decided that everything that you don't like can potentially be uh, uh, inappropriate. Now listen, I have a 27-year-old daughter, okay? So in most ways, I am in favor of the Me Too movement. But another question that I have about the movement is, is their mantra that women must be believed. Believe all women. It's a phrase commonly heard throughout the Twitterverse at the moment, and one that carries potentially frightening future implications. But what does this oft-heard feminist catchphrase really mean? Should women be shielded from all scrutiny? Or rather, should we believe women in the sense that we take their accusations seriously and investigate their claims? Emily Linden, a columnist at Teen Vogue, oh god this woman's influencing minors, voiced this radical view on Twitter last week. I'm actually not at all concerned about innocent men losing their jobs over false sexual assault slash harassment allegations. If some innocent men's reputations have to take a hit in the process of undoing the patriarchy, that is a price I am absolutely willing to pay. I think this feminism can go too far. I'm a feminist, but I think that this third wave feminism is, is a bore. I think it paralyzes men. I think that this Me Too movement is a bit too much for me. I'm sorry, I'll probably get killed for saying that. You will. 
My mother taught me, don't go to a hotel with a stranger. If someone answers the door in a bathrobe and it's supposed to be a business meeting, maybe I should go with somebody else. Now, have we heard all heard of cases where women made allegations that were proven to be false after police investigation? There are women on YouTube and IG right now that are actively lying on Kevin Samuels, making false allegations about him simply because they hate the fact that he tells the truth. And we all know people that come up with reasons to justify why they lie. So why would anyone in their right mind think that every woman who makes an allegation must be believed automatically? And why do women who make the allegation get to have their identity protected while the man gets exposed publicly? Shouldn't the man's identity be protected also just in case the allegation turns out to be unbelievable? I've covered this story. Uh, when the first story came out, I was kind of taken aback, like, wait a minute, something doesn't sound right here. But then when you consistently have multiple women that come forward with the same or similar stories, um, you, you got to say, hold up. There's there's definitely uh, more to this. And everybody, as they say in the South, ain't lying, you know. Tasha K. note to self. Everybody ain't lying was a standard that you could go by back in the day when people had morality about lying. Today, lying is not a matter of morality, it's a matter of convenience. People lie today just because they couldn't get their way. And people lie and claim that they have a, a, a neck injury from a car accident just to get paid. And aren't people found to be lying and making false injury claims every day in America? Now, I don't know if Deshaun Watson's accusers are lying. However, the situation appears to me to be a Me Too movement gone wrong story. One woman made a claim um, and uh, uh, other women saw that she might get the bag, so they jumped on the bag wagon, lied, and then said, me too. And why should all of these accusers be believed? And why should Deshaun Watson have to face these allegations publicly simply because these women say that he behaved inappropriately? There is no claim that he actually assaulted them or forced them physically, but rather he basically just tried to get the booty. So, Cornerstone Carolyn, joins a whole bachelorette party of white women who have called the cops on black people in 2018. Right? Barbecue Becky, Permit Patty, uh, Pool Patrol Paula, and- There is an African-American man. I am in Central Park. He is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. I'm sorry, I can't hear you that. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops immediately. We have all seen videos of the numerous Karens that call the police and lie on black men. So yeah, Tasha, there is a possibility that everybody could be lying. And it might have started with one lie and snowballed into an avalanche of lies because these broke chicks saw an opportunity to get some of his money. And remember, these allegations are coming from low-income women that have to touch men for money. And that alone, in my opinion, should raise suspicion rather than Deshaun Watson's automatic public execution. And if you watch football negotiations carefully, you already know that things like this always appear to destroy an NFL player's marketability. Deshaun demanded to be traded, but now the allegations have diminished his marketability and almost eliminated his trade possibilities. These allegations sound fishy to me. Well, that's all that I have for now. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, share this video with your family and friends, and I'll be back with something new that nobody told you. Until then, remember that God loves you, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And I'll see you next time on Maximizing Fatherhood.